they are advantages, they are powerful, they are popular, which means where your students will probably have been faced with this kind of activities before. So this is good because in this way uh, they will be kind of familiar with them. They are easy, easy, easy to use and they provide a good way to uh, moving the, the, the material you create around because they, can, they comply with the standards of IMS and sport. However, we need to talk about feedback and how this feedback is developed and is implemented in these tools and how we can tackle uh, certain drawbacks that have been identified. What I'm showing here is what you, what you do with a uh, model application for developing quizzes. So you can see, you can have potential answers and you can have a pre-programmed uh, feedback message that your student gets. This is how it works. You tell it, okay, if my, if my student answers answer three, he will get this feedback message and the grade will be whatever grade I want it to be. And in a similar fashion, the whole potential has to say pretty much the same thing. Uh, well, I said it's a modular program. Uh, if this is an example of uh, multiple choice uh, module, and you put the question right there, you put the the possible answers, any feedback message we want to uh, pre-program and the correct answer. Now, every time a student answers a question, he will get a pop-up window with that message, and when the student clicks OK, that feedback message is gone. So, we would like to have a way to have this uh, feedback process to be stored in a way that it is accessible uh, a long time, because this is going to be very useful for the student to be aware of their own learning. And there's actually quite a lot of research uh, about uh, automatic feedback and how to humanize it. What I've done is I have summarized uh, in five points and four points the, the, the main drawbacks that have been identified not from me but from previous researchers. And the idea is pretty much goes in the same direction. These messages are usually dehumanized and out of context which means that they don't take into account any context, any personal uh, progress that the student might, might have, uh, which uh, is strongly connected to the second point. Uh, and this is very important because a correct answer by student A might mean something completely different by a correct answer by student B, because you should be taking into account if those students are progressing well or bad, or if uh, yeah, the, 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 the personal context of that student will give you a lot of information about that. And finally, and this is uh, very obvious, drill based activities don't foster student recognition. They, they are totally unaware of the fact that they are learning because they don't put that knowledge into practice in a real context. And at this stage, I need to say that this research is uh, carried out on 100% online courses. Unlike my colleague before, this is not augmented learning. The idea is to have a 100% online course so that uh, these students with specific purposes are able to learn English uh, at their own pace without having to go to, uh, to the actual classroom. So the hypothesis from uh, which uh, research starts is the following. We want to have a synchronicity. We need this feedback to stay there, to be accessible 24-7, so that our students, our other professors, can see what the students are getting in each of the activities. And this is possible. Now, we also might have to face a paradigm shift. The, 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 the inclusion of technology, te technology is good, and technology is very amazing, and it's very cool. But sometimes, uh, just because, uh, just using technology for the sake of technology, the only thing you do is hiding the, the, the pedagogical uh, uh, purpose. And this is a, problem, a very big problem in the learning context. So if you're doing something like this, you need to be aware of the fact that there are methodological um, uh, uh, approaches that deal more with uh, communication instead of drill based instruction. And a more linguistic way is that our students in uh, Moodle or Hopo data, regardless of what they do, 
in the end they are dealing with words. They are dealing with words. In an idealistic scenario, they are dealing with sentences. But they don't interact with each other. They don't put into practice uh, language at text level and well, let's, yeah, uh, and, and, and part and pragmatics, that's something that definitely uh, is uncovered by these kinds of exercises. However, if we put together uh, an online environment and a way for them to interact, these linguistic levels might be brought to the students' attention. So I'm going to show you the actual implementation. I'm going to give you a couple of examples. It's very straightforward, actually. You've got that exercise here. This is the output you get from hot potatoes in the um, multiple choice exercise. Question, possible answers, and what I did was for each of the questions, I have a link on the top of the page. So every time a student feels like they might need this additional information, other than the pop-up window they would get when they click A, B, C, or D, they would be sent to a blog, very standard, with uh, one entry per question. And each of these entries are, uh, have, implement, have a online call to implement it. So every time a student goes into the question, he can see how many of his colleagues answered that question and what percentage of them answered A, B, C, or D. Now, first thing that comes to mind is, yeah, but what if I am the first student to do that? I will have no information, I will find the last one. I will have probably a very good information about that. The idea is to reward the early birds, those who answer things first, and kind of punish those who wait for that information to stay there. And because of the nature of Web 2.0, we always have these uh, places where the, uh, an actual conversation about the, the activity can happen. This is how the information goes. We are not anymore into a man-to-machine interaction. I, as an educator, publish content on online that is going to be constantly upgraded. This content is going to be producing feedback to any user who in turn is going to update this content all the time. So there's a kind of cyclic uh, movement and this is, I think this is very good because in the end what you get is a uh, kind of learning object that in reality can, might have the potential to be modified months or even years after the course is finished. The second implementation is for a feeling the gas exercise. So I wanted uh, the students to have a grasp, and this was for business English, and they have a text where they have uh, gas for the expressions such as, uh, yeah, there is a dramatic increase in the sales of this. So yeah, we, we took off these words that are important for a graph description. At the same time, a student would go to this very nice, uh, very appealing online environment where they could comment of, on whatever thing uh, they felt necessary. So this was very good for me and, uh, from the educator point of view because if you see a lot of people commenting on a certain point, of the graph, this means maybe either it's too difficult or you, you did something very wrong and you might think you might have to re rethink uh, what, what, uh, how you develop the activity so you don't fall into the same problem again. And this is again how the information goes. And this is again the idea of having a platform that is constantly updated because of the interaction of the students, which eventually will produce a final document that will be the answer to the, to the exercise. I evaluated this on 20 people that were involved with uh, English for specific purposes, either from the academic point of view or from the professional point of view. And I wanted to see how they perceive the difficulty, like not how difficult things were before and after, but how they felt that the exercises were uh, more or less difficult. And it was just a matter of time constraints and lack of resources, like almost everything in life. Uh, and I, it was also important to see how satisfied they were after they tested the system. And yeah, well, this was, even if, it, if this is promising, I have to say it was quite expected. 
the degree, the, the, the score, the difficulty, the perceived difficulty uh, of both multiple choice exercises and the legal exercises was lower when we included word to point of feedback. It doesn't mean other than they perceive these exercises to be easier. And in addition, and I think this is a very nice thing, we told them, okay, now you've seen the system. Say, for example, tomorrow you're going to be dealing with an uh, e learning course. What kind of feedback would you value the most? What, what would you be interested in? Would you stick to the previous automatic feedback? Nobody. Would you prefer a hybrid, uh, a combination of collaborative feedback and autonomous feedback? And this is what everybody said, or what almost everybody said. Um, because, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, what you showed me is very cool, but the automatic feedback, please don't get rid of that because it's helping me in a lot of ways. And well, yeah, I needed to have this because, you know, the folks, the funny guy. <laughs> And then there are some unproven advantages. This is advantage, these are advantages that I play that exist, but I haven't had the opportunity to actually measure them. We have reusable feedback, as I said before. They are platform independent, and I think this is very important because regardless of the fact that you have a smartphone, uh, you're working on Linux, on Mac, on Windows, as long as you have a web browser, you can do this stuff. And this is very good because you would be uh, overcoming a lot of technological barriers. Again, the linguistic levels uh, at all sentence level are brought to the students' attention. And again, the method has to be reformed. Uh, which, yeah, see that as a problem, see that as an advantage, but definitely see that as a fact. But it's mm -hmm. very difficult. Uh, if you ask me if there any problems, I would say, yeah, quite a lot. Uh, it's a time of human task. So if you're not ready to spend a lot of time and fail, and then try again and fail and figure out something that your students like, then don't do it because it really takes a lot of time. And, and, and your enthusiasm on a very nice new um, implementation on a course might be faced with the hard reality of incredibly dull responses from your students. Uh, you will, if, if, if you're a teacher, you know this is part of the game, so don't be discouraged. This, is, this, is, this might happen. Uh, now, the idea of does it actually improve learning, which we know that the people find uh, exercises a bit less difficult when they use this. But is it 